Academy of Sciences in our Philippines Coral Reef exhibit here. As you can see, we're getting ready for our coral reef dive program. If anything about this tank makes you curious, whether it's the diver or all these fish, we'll be talking about our coral reef and how we care for it. This program usually lasts about 15 minutes. We'll get started in just a few more right here at 2.30. And in addition to talking about this tank, we'll also be opening it up to your questions and feeding the fish. So we got a lot to do. It all starts again right here at 2.30. And we try to give you a preview of that here in the Philippines, where there more, might be more life than any other coral reef. So what do you think? Let's, let's get an inside perspective and see why coral reefs are such a great place for things to live and a great place to go diving anyway. Now, all of you here, you found one of our divers. He's got this long cord attached to him, huh? Well, I happen to know the diver with the cord attached to him is Diver Mike. So on the count of three, can everybody say, hi, Diver Mike? Let's go one. Two, three. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Thanks for your help. I just wanted to make sure we had your attention because I'm sure there's a lot to look at in there. Well, Dr. Mike, what's it like to be in this tank? Oh, well, it's absolutely beautiful. It's nice and warm in here, about 78 degrees. And I just fed the fish some broccoli. And they are, it's real fun. They kind of peck at me while they're pecking at the buff broccoli. <laughs> All right. Did, did you survive okay? Did I survive? Yeah, I made it to this one. Yeah, I'm okay. All right. Well, that's great. Well, uh, what brought you to this coral reef anyway? Why is this such a fun place to go diving? Uh, well, coral reefs are uh, just absolutely beautiful, and largely because there's so many, uh, such a wide variety of species, both uh, plant and uh, animal species. And why is there so much life in a coral reef? Why is it a good place to live? Well, it's a, it's a symbiotic environment, which means that different species help each other out. Uh, the uh, corals provide a place for the fish to live, and uh, the algae grows with the corals, which provides food for the fish. Yeah, so again, there's a lot of life in kind of a compact spot here. The corals, as they're growing, some of the hard corals, like the ones you see over here, build a little skeleton for themselves. And over thousands and millions of years, those little skeletons build up into the coral reefs that we see, which are then in turn home to lots of other animals, as you mentioned. And uh, Diver Mike, what is a coral anyway? Is it like any other animal we might see in the aquarium here? Well, if you look behind me, you'll see a wide range of different corals. There's hard corals and soft corals. They may look like plants to you, but they're actually animals. All right, so has anybody here seen any jellies or anemones? Yeah, so corals are the same type of creature here. Excellent. Well, now that we know uh, what these corals are in here, um, Deborah Mike, how are you able to tell us about corals anyway? How can you talk underwater? Well, I've got a special scuba diving mask that covers my whole bit, my whole face. And if you look at this red car going to the surface, that's got wires in it to carry the audio signal. All right, so pretty neat stuff. And you've got an oxygen cord too, right? That's in there. That's right. The yellow cord is bringing oxygen down to me from the surface. All right, so definitely some important stuff. Well, that's good. It's good to know that you're well taken care of and that you can tell us about your experience here. Um, but now that we know how we take care of you, how do we take care of all this life in here? How do we make sure, especially the corals, get what they need? Uh, well, the, the biggest thing we do is to make sure that the water is uh, precisely balanced to have the right uh, salts and other chemicals that the various species in here depend on. All right, and do we actually make our water from scratch here? Uh, that's right. We start with a product called Instant Ocean, and then we do further modifications to get the, the, the salts and other chemicals exactly right in the water. There's a big list in the back room of all the chemicals that go into the water. Yeah, so you can imagine the next time you go to a drinking fountain today, that water could have become water for this tank with some of those special ingredients. And as you mentioned, we need to make sure these ingredients, this recipe is just right. Otherwise, it's kind of like making a big batch of lemonade that went a little wrong. Now, if we added, say we're making lemonade, and we added too much lemon juice, how would that taste to us? Hmm. 
sour, bitter, exactly, because of the acidity. And that can happen to our ocean water too. If we don't get the mix of chemicals just right, it can become more acidic as well. And while acidic lemonade might just taste bad to us, acidic ocean water can make it difficult for animals like corals to build their skeletons. This is actually something that's happening in our oceans today. Has anybody ever heard of ocean acidification? It's something that's getting a little more attention in the news. Um, and Diver Mike, even though this is happening in the ocean, it starts in the air. How does that work? Well, what happens is the ocean is like a big sponge. It absorbs uh, stuff from the air, and if there's a lot of CO2 in the air, like there is on our planet today, it absorbs the CO2, which is what eventually upsets the, uh, the acid balance in the ocean. Alright, so the added ingredient of the carbon dioxide makes the ocean more acidic, makes it difficult for some of these animals out in the wild to build their shells or their skeletons. But luckily here at the Academy, we can make sure that doesn't happen since we custom make our water. And I think you can tell the result is pretty good. We have a very healthy coral reef in here. And it's not just our corals that are healthy, all these fish are too. Now is anyone kind of mesmerized by the tropical fish in here? I'm gonna raise my hand for that. Any guesses how many uh, fish are in here anyway? How many fish can you fit in a 212,000 gallon tank? What do you think? 100, that's a good start. It's more than 100, what do you think? A thousand? Ooh, getting closer. One more guess? Hmm. What do you think? A million! Oh, I wish we had a million fish in here. That'd be really cool to see. Uh, Diver Mike, about how many fish are you swimming with right now? Well, let me take a minute to count here. You got one, two, five, oh. I got about 2,000 fish. And about 125 different species. All right, sounds pretty good to me. Okay, well now that we know a little bit more about how many fish are in here, how we take care of our corals, and how you're talking to us, does anybody out here have any questions for our diver? Anything you want to know about this tank? What would you like to know? Oh, that's a good question. Is anybody wondering how you get into this tank? That'd be kind of fun. All right, Diver Mike, how did you get into this tank? Where did you enter from? Well, at the top of those stairs over there, you can see the uh, coral reef lagoon area, and there's a, a special area where the divers can uh, climb into the water. All oh, right. And uh, how how were you able to well just climb into this water anyway? How were you able to volunteer here at the academy? Have you done a lot of scuba diving before? Yes, I've been scuba diving for about 20 years, and then in order to dive here at the academy. Need to go through special training courses to uh, be prepared for any emergencies. Alright, so if you want to dive here or dive anywhere, you can work on your swimming now and take some scuba diving classes. Sounds like a pretty fun activity. Alright, any other questions for our diver? Did you have one? Yeah. Oh, good eye! So, uh, we're wondering, we see some plastic tags, Diver Mike, uh, along the coral reef. Do you know what those are for? Uh, plastic what, did you say? There's like little plastic tags. They're white. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what, what, what you're referring to. <laughs> um, I think this is something that we just added recently. I see one behind that diver. There's a couple more here. And I think this is a project to make sure that our corals in here are getting what they need. Because even though they're animals, they have an algae in their skin that helps them make food. So I think this is helping us find places to measure light levels. Now, Diver Mike, how does this relationship between corals and algae work anyway? What's the deal there? Well, I mentioned earlier that uh, corals look like plants, but they're actually animals. But in order to survive, they have a plant inside them. They have an algae inside them. And the algae provides energy to the coral, most of its energy in order for it to survive. And of course, we know where plants get their energy from, right? Where do plants get their energy? The sunlight, exactly. Yeah, so the algae is kind of like a plant and it needs sun too, so good eye. Leave those little spots there to measure the light levels to make sure the algae in the coral is getting everything it needs. Excellent. All right, any other questions for our divers? Anything about this tank that makes you curious? Yeah. Here, Diver Mike, uh, what happens if it gets dirty? Do you have to clean all day long like this guy over here? 
Yes, we clean the tank every day. What happens is that algae grows on the, this window here, this acrylic window, and we use a little sponge to wipe it off. All right, now I notice you're also holding on to something there. Is that because there's a lot of current in this in this tank? Yes, to uh, simulate the natural environment, there's a lot of jets in here, and we also filter the water to the tank about every 45 minutes, over 200,000 gallons worth. All right, and we don't want you to get whisked away, so it's like you've got some pretty strong suction cups there. Yeah, I'm not going to go there. Depending on the jet boat, I might fall on the side. All right. So between our divers cleaning the tank here and all that water movement, we're able to keep this tank again nice and clean so it can be healthy for all. But how about all these fish? Do you think they need to eat? Absolutely. Would you like to see these fish get fed? I definitely would. Uh, Diver Mike, would you say it's about that time? I'm sorry? Would you say it's about time to feed all these fish? Oh yeah, I'd like to see them eat some fed. It's so beautiful. What happens? We have a Diver Mark upstairs feeding, feeding for us. Alright, so he's getting ready with the food up top. There you go. And there it goes. <laughs> Alright, well enjoy watching all these fish get their food. Keep an eye out for some new species that may have come out of hiding or out of resting to grab a bite to eat. Now, this, this is not the first time these fish have gotten fed today. Uh, Denver Mike, as I believe you mentioned at the beginning, you were feeding them broccoli too. Why do we feed these tropical fish from the Philippines broccoli? That doesn't seem natural. Well, that was actually an idea that was uh, discovered here at the academy. Someone thought that maybe broccoli would look enough like coral and the fish would like it, and it turns out they do. And that's now something that we've shared with other aquariums around the world. Great, very neat. So we're kind of always making sure and looking for new ways to keep all the animals comfortable and uh, well fed in here. So for those fish who might be a little tempted to nibble on our coral, instead they can get some nice nutritious broccoli. Alright, so sometimes we get broccoli diver mic, but what might they be eating at the surface right now? Uh, those are algae pellets and protein pellets, uh, not unlike what you would uh, eat in your home aquarium. Alright, and about how many times Day that they get fed. It seems like a lot of fish to have to be. Well, the divers feed them twice per day, and there's also an automatic feeder machine that feeds them periodically during the day. All right, so lots of food, lots of different kinds of food. So all these, what, over 125 different species of fish we have can get what they need. All right, well, what do you think? Is this a pretty fun way to spend the afternoon? Checking out a tropical fish feeding? All right, I see lots of smiling and mesmerized faces. Uh, Diver Mike, obviously the Academy is doing a good job of taking care of this coral reef, but for the coral reef fans out here, what can we do to help out our oceans? Well, uh, some of the important things you can do are to try to limit your energy use and, and limit the amount you drive a car. When you uh, leave your lights on, that causes power plants to, to generate more CO2 into the air, which then affects the oceans. And I understand you're uh, taking steps to reduce your own energy use or to perhaps use energy in an alternative way. What do you do to help Diver Bank? Well, that's right. I just uh, remodeled my house and I added some solar panels to the roof. And hopefully that'll provide mostly electricity I need for the year, not all of it. All right, that's excellent. So luckily there's lots of technology already in our hands. Hopefully we can make choices that fit into our own lifestyles to reduce our use of fossil fuels because then that will limit the amount of carbon dioxide we have in the air that gets absorbed by the ocean, creating a more acidic environment that makes it difficult for our corals. And of course a big part of making these changes is learning more about these ecosystems in the first place. So thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us here at the Academy. Can we also give a big round of applause for Diver Mike to thank him for sharing his diet? Thanks for coming everyone. Alright, now Diver Mike, when we come up with more questions or if we want to check out your diet gear, will you be available after the show? That's right, if you go up by the uh, giant plans upstairs, I'll be there after the show. And I'd like to uh, come and give you a high five before you go. I'll be down here at the bottom. Oh, it sounds like fun. So feel free to say hi to Diver Mike here or up top. I'll also be here if you have any questions. But I know there's lots to do here at the Academy. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. If you'd like to see animals get fed, the penguins will be fed at 3 o'clock coming up soon. So I hope you enjoy your day. Thanks again for being here. Thanks, everyone.